thank you again for tuning in to the hobo and no one. Unfortunately, again, my girlfriend is at her job. Again, being a famous photographer keeps her very active, unlike Hobo Tom. He just kind of sits at home and collects aluminum and makes videos on his pretty poor equipment and plays with his cat, as you've seen if you've checked in for the past few episodes. Again, my name is Hobo Tom. And while well, Normie my hopefully will be here soon, I know hopefully for us, let me know week, I hope to get her here. And for now, this is the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. This is a SmackDown review, which was very, I thought it would be very hard to beat the upbeat nature of yesterday's Raw, especially with the final deletion, or the ultimate deletion. Yes! For Ray White was rendered obsolete. And of course, if anyone is a true wrestling the great four-way chant. I think it was at some wrestling match in Peru between the Hardy Boys and Young Bucks with the elite, too sweet, obsolete, soccer. So again, this is SmackDown. And SmackDown open to Daniel Bryan. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the whole news report about how he's been cleared for action. So again, that's always good news. Um, he went then to a more somber mode about how he has to confront Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn about their actions last week. But for the most part, this was just focus on him coming back and him saying how grateful for he is to have the opportunity to be back. Um, he seemed really genuinely to get choked up, especially when he mentioned his wife, Brie Bella, or I guess Brie... Danielson, I guess. What, whatever the kayfabe name is. The death of kayfabe name. That's something I didn't talk about last last time with the Miz trying to kill off kayfabe. That's a whole other whole other day. But again, he kind of went through being grateful, and he did really seem genuine about being choked up, especially when he met how his wife supported him, and of course the birth birth of his baby girl, to, to whom I. Wish every happiness and everything good happens to everyone. Again, it's always great to see him in the ring. Again, he had his whole list of thank yous. And that was pretty good. It went to commercial. And then we have the a, a quick thing with him and Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler just says, I can't wait till I face you. And he's like, yeah, okay, whatever. This led to our first match, which was the surf and turf match. And unlike Raw... SmackDown started off really hot, cooled off a little bit, got hot again. Almost a little bit like Rob, but this they had a lot more wrestling matches, and SmackDown seemed to go really fast. I think after I kind of sat down, had dinner of, of, of egg salad sandwiches, turn on the TV, 8 o'clock come, comes around, SmackDown starts. I think the next time I looked at the clock, it was like 9.15, and I'm like, whoa, that was quick. Because sometimes Raw just seems like a slog, especially because it's three hours. But the two hours works really well for SmackDown. So with our first really match of the night, we have Rusev. Rusev Vashka. With Happy Rusev Day. And Shinsuke Nakamura. as And along with AJ Styles as a guest commentary. Again, this was a really great match. This was the, this was the surf and turf match. Just a notch below the flaming on of... The ultimate deletion last night. Again, good trading kicks, both both great in that respect. Just it was a really good match. I do like the fact that Rusev has that potential to win either by submission or pinfall, where Shinsuke is more as I'm going to knock you out and then pin you, and a person again. This was this was a really good. This was an excellent match. It's hard to say Shinsuke can put on a bad match, even from his days in NXT. Very good. Charismatic, proud, and all his weird gyrations and everything. And just Rusev being the, the perfect heel. It was good. Um, towards the end, after Nakamura got the pin, Aiden English kind of came in. AJ Styles teased about helping him, which I really like. But Shinsuke said, no, no, no. I got it. I got it. I fell both of them. Oh, I'll get it. Or whatever he said. It's kind of cool. 
then from there you have a backstage stage with Natalia and Charlotte, and this kind of led into their match later. I don't know why they didn't have it right away. Natalia, even though this this was really kind of a good promo, but Natalia, whenever she's on the mic, just seems like that Kmart mom. I want to speak to your manager. It's just like, yeah, whatever. Just, just keep in the ring, and after that, and again, Charlotte's woman of a thousand robes, and can do no wrong. She looked like a thousand bucks. I mean, just looks tremendous there. Watching the TV like a normal person, staring at the TV head on. So, uh, yes, but whatever. Um, then we went to commercial. Again, the the thing I do like about SmackDown is they at least show you for the most part the action during the commercial breaks. Again, that happened in the. Rusev Nakamura match, and and I'm fine with that. I mean, nothing great. Commercials, some strikes, some basic wrestling holds. Yeah, you, you can miss it as long as you see. It's like, oh, you get the flow going. However, the second match was just a can of soup. I don't, this just feel like filler. It was Baron Corbin versus Ty Dillinger. Both of them got jobber entrances. I have no idea why. There just seemed to be more bickering. This was more about the announced team than it was the match. Again, it seemed like a little bit of, of botchamania. Baron Corbin went for the end of days. I believe they kind of goofed it up, so he threw him out. It, kind of, it was like a whole reset of it. And not bad. <laughs> my, my little note, and, and again, my show, shout out to Steven Larson, because cause it's kind of funny. Like, hey. You're not me. You can't kick out of the end of days. But, man, whatever. And then this led to the match between Charlotte Flair and Natalia. This match was a... You know, a Flay... Flay Mignon. Well, no, 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 no. Not Flay Mignon, but definitely the Serpent Turf. Again, both these ladies, tremendous Matt rest. And they had to pick up something from their uncle or father, or or both, between Brett and 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 Jim the Anvil, and it was just really good. Charlotte's definitely her daddy's daughter taking taking some of his moves. Those chops though, she mastered those. Woo! So again, it's just really an over good match, and and a tease. A failed cash in, which I think, and probably half of the WWE universe think is going to be a failed cash in by Carmella at WrestleMania. Because when Carmella tried to cash in on Charlotte Flair, the, the ring bell never sounded for a new match, and Italia won in a roll up. Hey, it was good though. Again, this is, this is a good surf and surf match. It's, it's, it was good, it's enjoyable. Again, very, very technical. And that's the stuff I enjoy. So from there we went on. Let me do a little, little bit of a recap what happened between the Usos, the New Day, and Bludgeon Brothers. So the next match, again, you have a good tag team match. At least, again, they use that split screen for the entrance. and. And I think the whole match was televised, really. Again, this was a good cheeseburger match. I'll tell you what. Even though they don't have the sound effect, like the just the pure slap, this had that thud. And I tell you what, Harper, man, those feel like they, they hurt. They just, it's that solid hand on flesh. You don't get that slap effect. It's like, ooh. It's like, whoa. I think the Usos tried to go for the old Killer B switch, switcheroo. So again, it was a fun match. It was a. Ch- I mean, Harper obviously won, and Harper looks a lot smaller than than he used to. I don't know if he's lost weight or if it's the new outfit. Maybe the outfit and he always was. I know he's a big guy, and I I mean he just looks thinner. He looks leaner. And again, it was a fun. Match. Next thing we had. The Jinder Mahal promo. And you know, this thing's just 
the Singh brothers just gonna get beat up. I just forget which one that was. The other one injured himself, and and I hope he comes back soon because this guy's just getting. It was DDTs for, for for Singh from both Rude and Randy Orton. There was a tease of the glorious DDT, a tease of an RKO. It was a stare down between all three men. The, the old the old famous Mexican Mexican three way. And it was really fun. Um, from there, uh, you, you repeat match. And this is the one thing I don't like about SmackDown is that they keep on repeating the same matches over and over and over again. It's like, and they trade off, and sometimes don't trade off, and it's lopsided, and it's like, uh, they're going to win again. It was Naomi and Becky Lynch versus the Riot Squad of Sarah Logan. And I had to think about that only because I remember her as Crazy Mary Dobson. And and Liv, Liv Tyler, who I actually met once, and for some reason she looked really upset about something when I, when I saw her. But hey, it is what it is. I'm sure dealing with with, with, with with hobos and bums and crazy people from Daytona Beach and other Florida cities is not the most exciting thing. Say, oh, can I have my picture with you? But you never know. Again, both of them kind of got double job wrenches. It was a ham sandwich. It was an okay match. Becky Lynch with a disarmor on Sarah Logan. Eh. So so. And this led to the last segment where you have Daniel Bryan coming in. Again, he gets his pop from the crowd, tells Ke Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to get in the ring. For the most part, Daniel Bryan says, you know, guys, I've been fired twice, but I've always come back better. So he said, you're fired. Again, it was, it was pretty good. It was entertaining. This, it was a first bump for Daniel Bryan. I was shocked. He said, oh, I'm clear to come back. First night back, he takes his bumps. Yeah, you got to give it to him. They, they look to really protect him, though. I mean, even the hula the kick, you could really tell it's like he really missed. Daniel Bryan just kind of turned all the way around and, and didn't take a hit. He's taking his bumps straight on his back. His head didn't hit up, hit off the ropes funny. I mean, hey, kudos to Daniel Bryan. He's an excellent wrestler. And if anyone deserves to be back in the ring, he should be. Again, he's only one brain buster in the ring anymore. So, again, I just hope he, he, he he's careful. Again, you can take some bumps. I mean, taking the brain busters like you used to in the indies is, is not healthy for you. Yeah. So again, Daniel Bryan is back. He gets in his yes kicks. The whole the crowd went bonkers. Yes, 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 yes. Every time he had a kick. Eventually, the numbers game with Owens and Sami Zayn came out ahead. They it was a hula kick, and you can really tell even from the one angle that, that he really missed because it looked like he has like a little more towards the left than it should have been. He got his head, leg caught, hung up on the rope. And Dallin Bryan again, still a great seller. Then they closed it off with power bomb, all three of them were on the floor, and Kevin Owens power bombed. Daniel Bryan onto the ring apron, which they say is the hardest part of the ring. But you figure you're doing it from there. You're only falling a foot versus falling five, six feet in the air. And again, if again he took it really squarely in the middle of the back. Oh, and then <laughs> I forgot to mention this. Daniel Bryan talked about Shane McMahon's injuries. And so I say, well, he has contusions along his rhomboid muscle and his trapezius. A fancy way to say he bruises his upper back. And I'm sure it's just that he has thoracic con contusions. It's like the old way. It's like, oh, the punch of the solar plexus. Like no one really saw somewhere in the stomach or somewhere. I don't know. I always thought it was in the stomach. But I don't, even, I don't think there is such a thing as a solar plexus. Again, the crowd was really hot, booing Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, chanting, you're still fired. You're still fired. 
na 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 hey goodbye and that was really the end of the show so goodbye to everyone again please feel free to like and subscribe um also email any comments you have at hobo and his girlfriend at gmail.com and send me that email or send me the comment you will get your comment or email read online and it will be on youtube for everyone to hear um i'm not too sure if i'm just a little program note i'm not too sure if i'm going to be doing the impact taping because tomorrow night i'm going to the hockey game old school hockey eddie shore in orlando with to the Atlanta Solo Bears with my girlfriend. So that might be a little bit of a bonus video clip. Maybe I'll show the, the hobo and his girlfriend review a hockey game. Ooh. Again, a little tease for later. Again, thank you for watching. Please like.